Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we are going to be talking about 10 patterns to recreate the quiet luxury trend. And if you're not sure what the quiet luxury trend is, we're going to talk about that as well. Okay, welcome back to the channel. And um, yeah, I've got some more uh, I guess style fashion inspiration for you and ways that you can recreate it yourself So I've paired ten patterns um, that I think would go really really well and from ten different pattern companies I'm trying to keep that um, diversified a little bit and um, Ways that you can use those to recreate the quiet luxury trend. All right quiet luxury. What is that? Basically, it, I think it was a trend that was started on TikTok. to be honest. I don't know. I'm not on TikTok, so. I, but I, I do think that that's where it kind of started. Um, I'm sure I'm getting to this much later than uh, the rest of the party. But the basis behind it is kind of that old money aesthetic. So um, uh, the old, um, think Ralph, Lor you know, Ralph Lauren and um, the Royals, kind of. Just those looks that... Um, kind of speak to someone being very wealthy, kind of a, a, yes, a luxurious type of outfit, for lack of a better word. Um, so the basis of these are, um, it's a minimalist kind of um, style approach. And I also want to say before we get into this, that, you know, this may not be a trend that you have any interest in. Maybe you like wearing a lot of bright colors like I do, or um, you like different styles. You know, you're not really a classic, your aesthetic's not really classic, that sort of thing. That's absolutely fine. I think that's the beauty about trends. You can kind of choose, um, pick and choose what you want to follow, what you don't want to follow. And I like to be informed about everything just because I'm always curious and there may be some things that are new to me that I want to try out. But yes, if this is not your cup of tea, absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, the Quiet Luxury, it's a lot of minimalist um, style lines, so not a lot of seam lines, um, minimal details, a lot of neutrals, not a lot of pattern, and if there is pattern, it's very basic, like a stripe, um, so not very busy, very classic silhouettes, um, not real fussy, you know, the, the bags and shoes are all very simple, structured, things are tailored. And then the big things that come out of this are, that make it kind of uh, the most important things I would say, are that things have really great fit because they are very minimalistic and simple and um, more luxurious fabrics. So you see a lot of um, beautiful cashmeres and silks and beautiful different wools and linens and, you know, just very, um, higher end, beautiful, natural fibers. Now as a seams, a sewer, someone that sewist, so whatever you wanna say, <laughs> someone that sews their own clothing, this is where we kinda of get a little heads up on the game because we can source these luxury materials a lot times um, and make the garment a lot less than what you would buy it. Um, so you may not want to invest in a cashmere overcoat. Um, and sewing your own cashmere overcoat would be expensive, but it would not be nearly as expensive as buying a cashmere overcoat from a store and, you know, putting your investment um, in into a ready-to-wear piece. Plus, Fitting. I mean, we can fit things the way that we want so that they fit our bodies perfectly and fit our proportions just right. So we do have, I feel like, a leg up on this trend a little bit um, because we we can easily get to that. You know, we don't have to take our things to a tailor um, to have them perfectly, you know, look like they were made for us because we can actually make things for ourselves. <laughs> they are actually made for us, um, which I think is a lot of fun. So that's kind of the basis of what quiet luxury is. You know, beautiful fabrics, a great fit, very classic style lines, um, you know, not a ton of seam lines or details, you know, not ruffles, not a ton of, of those kind of details, um, just very clean and simplistic, um, structured. That I think those are all good adjectives to kind of describe quiet luxury. So those things that, that make you look like someone, you know, the old money aesthetic, I guess. Um, I've seen a lot of things online too about, you know, how to make yourself look expensive on a budget and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I've talked about this on the channel before and can I make a t-shirt as inexpensively as I can buy one from Target, for instance? No, but can I make a t-shirt that is the quality of something that I would buy at a designer boutique for much less than that t-shirt? 
Yes. <laughs> so it's all about, you know, um, picking the materials that you like to wear the best and, you know, beautiful, uh, cotton, like high quality cottons, all that kind of stuff to really get that um, quiet luxury aesthetic. So I've pulled a ton of pictures off of Pinterest on um, kind of in all the different categories so we can kind of go through them. But I've picked 10 different types of clothing that I think um, highlight the are good for the quiet luxury aesthetic, as well as I paired each one with a pattern so that um, if you're kind of interested, you can take a look at some of these. Some of these are pretty classic, though, and you could find a lot of these in a lot of different places. So I've just tried to highlight um, different pattern companies so that you can get a, a wide range of kind of what's out there. And I have things on my phone here so that um, I don't forget what patterns I've paired with, <laughs> with what. <laughs> All right, so the first thing, um, I mean, when you think of like classic, you know, old money type thing, it's a button up shirt, right? Like a button up shirt is a very classic piece of clothing. If you have a classic um, style sense, chances are you've got at least one or two of these in your wardrobe. I do, classic is one of my style guide posts that I like to follow for my own personal style. Um, I've never been able to buy button up shirts in stores because my bust is much, puts me in a much larger, larger size than the rest of me goes into. Um, so that was something that was a game changer for me when I learned to sew button up shirts. That's kind of my um, origin story. <laughs> <laughs> of garment, uh, making my own clothes of garment sewing. But a button up shirt is definitely one that I've seen um, pop up in a lot of these different quiet luxury type of posts, um, made up in beautiful cotton shirtings. You know, you can a lot of times find like the Italian shirtings that are like really fine. Um, yeah, just a really beautiful white or um, an Oxford blue, even like a subtle stripe is also beautiful. If you're going into warmer months, linen is all obviously very beautiful for a button-up shirt and can create a really um, relaxed but still tailored look. And for the butt, for the shirt, uh, the pattern, I've gone with Simplicity 1538. I have made this before um, in a um, silk, and it was it's beautiful. And I would definitely, now my silk shirt is bright orange. That is not quite luxury. Quite luxury is more neutrals. Um, but the style of the shirt, because it's done in a silk and it's got, you know, yeah, there's at the um, wristband that go into the um, cuff, and it's just a really, I think, beautiful shirt. If that were done in a neutral, it would definitely be a contender for a quiet luxury wardrobe, but it is in a bright orange. <laughs> I just really like this pattern. It has a lot of fun details that you can do to the shirt. I just thought it was really well done. Um, uh, it's a big four pattern, and um, I did have to do some you know, fitting on it for myself. I had to do a full bust adjustment and all that kind of stuff. But once I got that all ironed out, it is definitely a shirt pattern that I would use again. Um, it's a lovely one, so I highly recommend that uh, simplicity pattern. Um, next up, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the button up shirts, are trousers. Now these are huge for fall, even if you're not following the quiet luxury trend. Um, there's a ton of stores selling more of your um, trouser style bottoms as opposed to jeans. You know, jeans are still out there obviously, but um, trousers are, are showing up, like tailored trousers, wider leg, um, you know, a little bit more relaxed, a lot of pleats. I know that's not everyone's thing. There's flat front out there as well, but just, yeah, classic trousers and, um, you know, sit at your natural waist and wools, um, you know, beautiful gabardines, wool suitings. Obviously you could do linen if you are doing something for warmer summer months, but yeah, that very classic tailored um, wide leg trouser seems to be everywhere. And for the pattern on this one, I have chosen the Style Arc Spencer Woven Pants. I actually have a sew along for this on the channel. So if you're interested in making a pair, I walk you through it and I show you how to line it. So if you are wanting to um, line a pair of trousers yourself, if you're using a wool and worry about being scratchy, I have added a lining to that pattern and it's not included in the pattern. I'd show you how to do that though. Um, it's a, a really um, easy, way to um, make your wool pants not itchy and wearable. <laughs> but yes, a pair of tailored trousers were number two. All right, number three, a pair of very classic jeans. Now there are, um, I mentioned this in the Love Notions video during Love Notions sale week, um, but I'm seeing three different leg styles a lot this uh, season, and that is wide leg, straight leg, and uh, flared. 
Um, and uh, most of them in like a medium to dark wash. Now for the quiet luxury, I am more inclined to kind of go towards, I mean, maybe the wide leg, um, cause it's more of a trouser style, but the straight leg seemed to be a little bit more classic. They end at the ankle, worn with a beautiful like ballet flat maybe, and a, um, you know, something very sleek, may, um, pointed toe, that sort of thing, worn with a button up shirt, or maybe it's just a classic t-shirt or, you know, blazer, like uh, you see jeans everywhere, but, for this, you know, no frayed hems, no holes in them, um, you know, nothing super trendy. It's more of your classic um, style line of jeans. And for the pattern, I've gone with the Love Notions Legatos. I just think that pattern is great. It is um, kind of a choose your own adventure. It has different backs for a full rear end, a flat rear end. Um, uh, if you need a curved waistband or a straight waistband, and then it has a, um, petite, tall, and uh, regular rises on there. So it's it's just got a whole bunch of um, options. And I was able to get a really good fit from the uh, pair that I made from that, which was wonderful. But um, they do have a straight leg. So they're a little bit more of a classic pair uh, style. Um, that, you know, that's the other thing with the Quiet Luxury is that it's pieces that you can wear. They're not only timeless, but also ageless. So it's something that you know, a 25 year old can look great in a button up and a pair of classic jeans and ballet flats, as well as someone who's 70 can look great or above, you know, that can look great in that same outfit and still, it just still look, you know, ageless, <laughs> timeless, you know? Um, so not only investing in pieces to take those into, um, you know, to keep them for a long time, but also silhouettes that don't even age. Like they go with different aged wearers as well as something that you can have for as long as you can fit into it. Um, but I think classic, nice pair of classic jeans are one of those pieces and saw those quite a bit. All right, next up are your t-shirts. Obviously t-shirts play a big part in all of our wardrobes. It's just a nice basic um, pattern. There are a ton of t-shirts out there, guys. My favorite is the Concord or the Cashmere at Concord, which is why I've put it in here because it comes with cup sizes. She has a few different neckline options. Um, I just find it a really beautiful and it's fitted t-shirt, which is my preference. I think it layers really well underneath things um, and can be worn alone. Um, I love it with the wider leg pants as well as with, um, you know, your straighter leg pants. I just think it's a really great t-shirt pattern. But again, find the t-shirt pattern that works really well for you. Um, but you know, real high quality cottons. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I feel like with t-shirts, if you want the, like, the real high quality, a good cotton spandex is really the way to go. You could get silk jerseys. You could get um, even some really nice rayon jerseys if you like a drapier t-shirt, kind of up to you. Um, but finding some really good as you can afford fabric that um, will make t-shirts that will last all the washes so that you can really get wear out of that. But in a few, again, for the quiet luxury, a few neutrals, maybe a stripe in there um, to help, you know, layer and all sorts of things for the wardrobe is important. Okay, next up, I have put a slip skirt in there. I've seen um, a lot of like silk bias slip skirts. They're very on trend right now. And I think that's a, a kind of an ageless piece. That's something that can be dressed up, can be dressed down. Um, right now you're seeing it with tennis shoes just as well as you're seeing it with heels um, to be worn to a formal event. It can be beautiful with a, um, you know, a button up shirt. If you're wearing it to more of a, um, a an event type of situation, it can be great with a t-shirt and a jacket over it. Um, I think they're just really versatile. And if you make something in a beautiful silk charmeuse, oh my gosh, like you can't go wrong. Um, there are a few out there of the bias silk skirts. I just went ahead and picked the Vicky Sews Saudi skirt. Um, it was just one that looked like it would kind of tick all the boxes. This one's a little bit longer than midi length. I would call this not quite maxi, but it is a longer skirt. Um, it's just really gorgeous. And that bias cut just uh, hugs the body beautifully. And, um, I, I think that it would be a great one to use for all of those looks. But again, there are, again, a lot of these patterns. There's a lot of different variations out there in the pattern companies. I just wanted to give you guys a good idea on some options. All right, number six is an oversized blazer. Now, um, I feel like that being an oversized blazer is a little bit of a trend we're seeing right now. Um, and probably it's one of those things that 
might ebb and flow, you know, not be quite as timeless. Like it might ebb and flow a little bit. And the same with a fitted blazer. Sometimes fitted blazers are more in and sometimes it's more oversized. A blazer in general is great for this look. I've gone with the oversized blazer only because I that's what I was seeing on all of the models. Most of the blazers were a boxier fit, more of that boyfriend fit. They still fit the model, but or the person wearing them, but they are just a little boxier through the waist and that sort of thing, um, giving a little bit more of a relaxed feel. And I've gone for the Friday Pattern Company Heather Blazer for this one. Um, it comes with patch pockets, but you could easily pop a welt pocket on there if you would um, prefer that instead of a patch pocket. Um, you know, you can pull a, a welt pocket from any blazer pattern and stick it on any other blazer pattern if you wanted to, um, kind of up to you. But the nice uh, boyfriend fit, it's a little bit more relaxed in the body and um, not it's not oversized in the shoulder. It fits the shoulder well. I've made it before, um, but just a little bit more loose and relaxed in the body, which is kind of the look that I'm seeing now. But you could make that in a, um, if you wanted to do a print, you could even go into some of the more um, like menswear inspired, um, like a houndstooth or um, a, a Glen plaid or a, um, oh, what else? Any of those more, what else am I trying to think of? Houndstooth, um, <laughs> My mind just went completely blank. Herringbone, any of those kind of menswear inspired um, suitings would be beautiful on the blazer. Or you could just go with a solid wool like a gabardine. Um, you could do a linen if you're in the warmer months. Um, but yeah, those beautiful fabrics to be a great layering piece. And um, these can be worn with dresses, with skirts, with jeans, all sorts of stuff. All right, next I've got um, a vest. Now vests have kind of come back in, in vogue here recently. Um, I think they're beautiful layered over things as well as a shirt, as a separate piece in and of itself. Um, I see this a lot monochromatically, so the vest and the pants match. Um, you know, it, it's just a, a really great piece, I think. And you want this to be tailored. You want it to be more fitted, especially if you're wearing it as is um, without a shirt underneath it, just wearing it kind of as a shell top. Um, I think you want it to be a little bit more fitted. And I've picked for this one, the Pattern Scout Birch Vest. I was one of the uh, pattern testers for this and it comes with cup sizes, but it is nice and fitted and gives a wonderful, um, uh, tailored look to it and it's lined. It's a really beautiful pattern, but this made with maybe the same fabric that you did your trousers in. You could wear them together. You could wear them separately would be a, a really great look. And again, the vest, you see them with the trousers, you see them with the um, jeans, um, you see them layered over, you see them as is, all sorts of things. They're uh, much more versatile than I was actually kind of thinking before, but this is definitely part of that um, quiet luxury aesthetic. Um, the other thing, and this is one of those things that probably kind of ebbs, has ebbed and flow a little bit, but you're seeing them everywhere right now, and it is your classic little French jacket. Um, so the, the Chanel style jacket. I've seen these both in, um, like a, like your typical tweed or boucle fabrics, as well as, um, in knits. Um, it'd be pretty easy to take like a, crew neck cardigan pattern and then just add some little pockets at the front, put some big buttons on there, um, buttons on the pockets, and you have kind of the same look if you wanted to of that and it'd still it'd be a cardigan instead of a jacket. But if you wanted to go all out and do the French style jacket, I have picked um, Bella Loves Patterns Freddy Jacket. Um, I've not tried the Bella Loves Patterns and she's got some really cute patterns. <laughs> so they're kind of looking a little bit. Um, but you would be able to make the French style jacket. You know, you don't have to make a couture. You, you can if you want. If you want to do the whole um, quilted French jacket, that would be something. Um, it's on my, my bucket list. I really want to do one of those at some point. But if you, you know, to save some time, you could definitely just choose a pattern and make it per the pattern instructions and get a really good um, fill-in piece until you had the time to do an actual couture French jacket. But um, yes, I think that this pattern would, would click those boxes. And again, seeing that with skirts, with jeans, with trousers, you know, you can dress those down, wear them with sneakers. You know, it's all about um, just keeping things simple. Some of those French jackets can get quite detailed with all of the different fringes and stuff like that. But with the quiet luxury, it seems to be just a little bit more understated, not, um, you know, maybe more solid colors and um, minimal on the, the buttons, you know, just one metal and, you know, not a lot of fringe or anything on them. So a little more subdued on those. 
All right, number nine, I have a classic tailored coat, especially as we're going into the cooler seasons here in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but something with simple style lines that is um, you know, very classic, things that you can make in a beautiful neutral melton wool um, or just a wool coating um, is beautiful to layer over any of these pieces and just really adds a pop of, um, it just makes you look expensive when you have a beautiful wool overcoat. Uh, for the pattern, I've gone with the Maker's Atelier Classic Coat. I think this is such a beautiful coat pattern. In fact, she has a few different coat patterns that I'm tempted to try that are just very, um, you know, she has a very minimalist, sleek aesthetic for her patterns, and these, this fits right in with that quiet luxury. Um, but yes, the classic coat, it is double-breasted, but I think that as an overcoat, it would be absolutely beautiful over any of these pieces, and really, you know, when you're out and about, my grandfather always said <laughs> that sometimes a coat is all people see you in, so you should have multiple coats, because a lot of times they don't see the outfit that's on underneath, so it's something that you shouldn't just have one coat, you know, that you should um, take that into consideration with the rest, rest of your wardrobe, just like you would your shirts or pants. Um, but yes, I think a classic overcoat in simplistic lines would be perfect for this trend. Finally, shirt dresses, which seems very like, oh, aren't shirt dresses always in? Yes, they are. Um, again, minimalist lines. Um, I saw everything from above the knee to midi length, you know, a little bit fuller skirts to um, a little bit more just like elongated button up shirts, basically. Um, but things were still tailored. So tailored in at the, you know, cinched in at the waist some way, or, you know, very, you know, nice and fitted at the shoulders. Nothing looked oversized or baggy on the wearers of these. <coughs> so just keeping that in mind. And again, a beautiful solid color. You could do this in silk. You could do it in linen. You could do it in a beautiful cotton lawn um, or a cotton shirting even. Um, but just keeping your materials neutral, um, solid, and um, just a real high quality fabric. So that really shines are kind of the keys here. And for the pattern, I've actually gone with Butterick, what is it, 6702. I have a sew along for this one as well. It is a beautiful shirt dress pattern and it's still in print. So if that is one, because uh, I was looking for just a very simple shirt dress pattern. And um, a lot of the shirt dress patterns out there just have a little bit more zhuzhing up. I wanted something with the waist seam for what I was using um, for this illustration. Uh, and yeah, I'm like, that is a fantastic sh shirt dress pattern. It's been around for quite a while as far as commercial patterns go. I've made it. I love it. I don't currently fit into the one I made, but <laughs> maybe one day soon. And um, it's a beautiful shirt dress pattern. So that's a good one to grab maybe in the next Butterick sale um, because it's a wonderful uh, pattern. And again, we'll give that whole nod to um, quiet luxury. So there you have it, guys. Those are 10 patterns to help you recreate the quiet luxury trend. What do you think? Are any of you going to be trying the quiet luxury trend? Do you already dress per the quiet luxury trend? I think for myself, I love the style lines of the quiet luxury, um, and I love having some neutrals. It's just that I need more color in my life. You all know this. I've tried to do more neutral route, and it just, I need more bright pops of color. I need my button up downs to be bright orange. <laughs> Um, anyway, that is, uh, yes, kind of my thoughts on it. I just like a lot more color than um, what this trend kind of brings in. But um, it'd be a good basis. You could build off of it, I think, really, really well. Um, so those are kind of my personal thoughts on it. But I think I'm enjoying seeing all the pictures of that people have been putting onto social media um, for their interpretations of this trend. All right, guys. That's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. I hope you get some sewing in. Okay, bye.